I'm Dr. Sam, and this is Dr. Sam's Health. In my previous video, I started a series of videos on different macronutrients. We have already covered carbohydrates in the last video, and today we're going to talk about something else, which will be fat. From the get-go, I would like to clarify something, specifically the terminology. Sometimes we use the word lipid, sometimes we use the term fat, oil, uh, sometimes we talk about adipose tissue, what are these, what are the differences, and uh, how do we approach them in general. As a physician and a scientist, I tend to use the word lipid, uh, and uh, it is a scientific term that uh, includes a group of substances that all of them are not water-soluble, and uh, th this group includes several actually very different, distinct uh, entities there. First of all, it's fatty acids. Second, it's triglycerides, which is a combination of fatty acids with a, uh, with a glycerol. Uh, another group of molecules that are included uh, into, the, into the lipid category is sterols, including cholesterol, quite famous. Uh, also, vi uh, lipid-soluble vitamins, such as A, D, E, K, uh, are included into this group. Now we can return to the terms fat and oil. So what are these? Uh, these are subgroups of lipids. Uh, and uh, they both comprise of triglycerides and fatty acids and only depending on the physical properties of the substance they can be divided into fat and oil. If this substance is liquid in room temperature this substance is called uh, oil. If this substance is solid we call it fat. That's pretty much the difference between these two. So now when we have clarified what are fats, what are oils, what are lipids in general, I would like to focus on the topic of today's discussion, which will be lipids and specifically fats. Fats and lipids comprise mainly of triglycerides, uh, which are a combination of glycerol and three fatty acids. There are quite a few fatty acids, you can only imagine. They, they, they are classified based on the number of uh, carbon atoms included into the molecule, and accordingly the length of the molecule can be uh, different and accordingly these fatty acids will have different names, different properties. Also there are uh, some specific add-ons to these molecules and specific bonds that connect in different carbon atoms that uh, give us an opportunity to actually uh, classify these fatty acids into different kinds like omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids, uh, saturated or unsaturated fat and so on. Uh, I think I think at this point what is important to know is that uh, two of these fatty acids are actually essential, which means that we cannot produce these fatty acids in our bodies and we have to get them with nutrition. These two fatty acids are called linoleic and alpha-linoleic acids. Uh, we don't have to memorize them, I just want you to know that there are two fatty acids that are essential and that we cannot live without them. So essentially what we have to do is we have to consume some fat at a certain point of our life in order to sustain uh, our metabolism. These fatty acids and uh, the molecules that are made of them, triglycerides, are quite abundant in nature. Uh, majority of fats, which are solid in room temperature, are found in animal products, whereas uh, oils are mainly found in plant-based products. We need both of them. So now we'd like to talk about what happens to these fats and oils when you consume them with food. Uh, first, all the substances get through our stomach, they get to the duodenum, which is the first part of our uh, intestine. And in this area, there are a couple of things that are happening. First of all, our liver produces some bile. Uh, and bile allows us to uh, break down these uh, chunks of fat or oil into smaller droplets. It emulsifies it and it allows for further processing and absorption of, of the fat or oil. The next thing that happens is our pancreas produces something that is called lipase, which is an enzyme that helps further breaking down the, the fat and oil in our gut into even smaller droplets and simpler molecules. After that, these little droplets have been absorbed by our intestinal cells and they get into the bloodstream. In our bloodstream, they form something that's called chylomicrons, which is a little like globuli or a little chunks, droplets of uh, fat that gets mainly absorbed by our liver. When liver absorbs these chylomicrons, uh, it further breaks down 
these droplets uh, and further breaks down the triglycerides, different lipids into fatty acids, gl glycerol, cholesterol, and we'll talk about cholesterol on a separate occasion, uh, and repackages them, forms new triglycerides, repackages them with some proteins, and forms something that's called uh, lipoproteins. And again, I think it's a little bit too much for today's discussion, but we'll definitely have a talk about this bad and good fat and high density and low density lipoproteins. For, for the moment, what we have to know is that liver packages uh, all this fat and oil into little lipoproteins and sends them out into the bloodstream. And this little protein there serves as like a postal stamp or as an anchor uh, for our tissues that will recognize that there is a little droplet of fat with little protein there and it will allow our tissues to actually recognize it as, as it is and absorb it and use it. The main target is obviously adipose tissue, which is simply fat. And this tissue, what it does mainly, it just absorbs all these uh, lipoproteins, uh, to be more specific, the triglycerides and cholesterol from uh, these lipoproteins, strips them off lipoprotein and takes them inside of it to store uh, as fat. Uh, other tissues sometimes uh, they use these lipids uh, for their metabolism or structural purposes uh, or not. Uh, really depends on what's happening in our body. And that brings us to the discussion of what are the functions of, of, of the lipids of fat. So there are actually quite a few functions, believe it or not. Uh, the very first and very obvious one is we use our fat as as an energy source, actually a very good one. Uh, first of all, we can store them and uh, lipids or fat or adipose tissue, it's very compact and it's very energy dense. One gram of fat gives us approximately nine kilocalories of energy, which is the highest among all macronutrients. Something I, I believe is worth mentioning is the process of uh, burning fat. So when our body realizes that it needs energy and it has to take energy from fat, what it does, it breaks down triglycerides into glycerol, which is effectively a carbohydrate. It gets burned very quickly and easily. Uh, and uh, it takes each fatty acids and starts something that's called beta oxidation. So during this beta oxidation, what our body does is it converts fatty acids into ketone bodies. And there are three molecules that are worth mentioning. One of them is acetone, another one is acetoacetate, and another one, the third one, is beta-hydroxybutyrate. Uh, they all are water-soluble, so they have been released into the bloodstream, and they can be uptaken by our tissues and used as, a, as an energy source. Pretty good one. This condition when we have lots of ketone bodies in our bloodstream is called ketosis. One important thing to mention is that it takes a while for our body to uh, switch from mostly carbohydrate-based metabolism to um, ketone-based metabolism. And this process is called keto adaptation. It might take up to two weeks, and uh, it is important to know that if you start consuming some carbs uh, when you are on low-carb diet, you will completely stop this um, process and you will reverse keto adaptation. You will have to go through another, uh, at least several days, likely two weeks again, to uh, switch back to burning fat or mm, go through keto adaptation. One of the most important organs in this process is our brain, uh, which takes two weeks to actually switch to ketones. And that is very important. Most likely you have heard about uh, Atkins flu or a uh, feel, feel, feeling of fatigue, malaise, when people are st just starting some sort of um, low-carb or ketogenic diet. Uh, and they are not willing particular, they're not feeling particularly well in the very beginning of the process. And uh, the reason for that is this, that our brain takes two weeks to adapt. This is a one very important fact and I want you to be aware of it. Because if you are going on a low carb diet, you should not break it. Also, I'd like to mention one peculiar fact about ketones. One of the ketone bodies is acetone, which is very volatile and effectively where when we are on some sort of a ketogenic diet, a low-carb diet, we produce lots of ketones. Uh, acetone can actually be br breathed out, and that's why some people, who, when they are on a very effective fat-burning schedule, uh, they start smelling funny. It's like some sort of a sweet acetone breath, which is exactly uh, 
because of the fact that they are breathing out acetone. They are breathing out their fat. Also, these ketones can be monitored in our urine using some dipsticks uh, just to see if we are effectively burning fat. I'd like to make another little point here. We all know about ketogenic diets, but I would like to say that knowing how fat has been metabolized, uh, you can actually conclude that anytime you are on some sort of diet when you're burning fat, your body is producing ketones because it's the only way of our body to burn fat. And any diet is ketogenic. So that was the first function, but fat actually serves quite a few different functions. Uh, I would like to bring your attention to at least two of them. One is structural, which means that our body consists of cells and each cell has cell membrane and each cell has number of organelles that some of them are having their own membranes and all these membranes are comprised of uh, one specific component which is phospholipids and you can say you can tell by the name that phospholipid has something to do with lipids so it's pretty much phosphorylated lipids and they're super super important because every single cell in our body has its main structural component, its membrane, comprised of lipids. So effectively just another point uh, towards the fact that we actually do need fat. They are essential to our survival. Apart from that, fat is playing another important role, uh, another important structural role. Specifically, adipose tissue forms some sort of cushions for many of our internal organs, such as, for example, uh, our kidneys. In addition to the, to the cellular membranes and uh, cushions, we do store a lot of uh, adipose tissue all over our bodies, mainly in like trunk area. And uh, I must say that adipose tissue serves as a perfect insulator and also it serves as a protection for, for, for our internal organs. The last function I would like to mention is signaling. You know that we have uh, quite a few different tissues in our body, gazillions of different cells and they communicate with each other and in some cases something like inflammation for example these cells prefer to communicate using some spe special chemicals and these chemicals are made from fatty acids and why that's one of the important things that I would like you to know so I won't go into the great detail here but I would like you to know that uh, there are omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids and depending on their structure, these fatty acids can be transformed into these chemicals that we use to signal to either uh, promote inflammation uh, or uh, if we take omega-3 as a substrate, we can convert them into some chemicals that will slow down inflammation or will stop it. That is why it is important to incorporate omega-3 fatty acids in our diets. And actually, as a psychiatrist, I must say that quite a few conditions can be reversed uh, or helped with by simply incorporating omega-3 fatty acids. It's actually one of the lines of treatment for depression, uh, for some um, neurocognitive disorders and so on. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about when we were talking about fats. Uh, let me sum it up. So first of all, fats are essential. They are essential for our survival. There are two essential fats. There are uh, lipid soluble vitamins which are also uh, vitamins meaning they are essential A, D, E, K so we have to incorporate fat in our diet another thing is that fat is a great source of energy and we all store quite a few uh, pounds of fat that can be used for structural purposes as an insulator and as an energy source uh, when we are on a diet or when, when we are fasting or when, when we're simply not having enough food to, to eat. On top of that, there is also cholesterol and I will definitely talk about cholesterol in my next video because it is important and I'm pretty sure all of you want to hear about it. So I plan to make a couple of videos on something like good fat and bad fat. We'll talk about more depth about omega-3, omega-6 fatty acids. Maybe we'll talk about saturated and unsaturated fat their role and so on and we'll definitely talk about the regulation of uh, fat metabolism and uh, that will be very important for us to know and to discuss in order to properly plan our diet uh, in our body transformation process so uh, I hope it was useful for you and uh, please 
leave your comments, uh, make suggestions, ask questions, like the video, subscribe to my channel. We'll, we'll have quite a few topics to go over in the future. And again, leave comments, ask questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, let's uh, keep the momentum going. And I'll see you in my next video. All the best.